Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twit Photo with Catherine Hall and Leo Laporte, episode number 52, recorded on April 10th, 2012. Frank Mayo. Twit Photo is brought to you by Squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to create a high quality website or blog. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase on new accounts, go to Squarespace.com and use the offer code TWITPHOTO4. It's time for Twit Photo. This is the show where we get great photographers, talk about their art, uh, how they do it, their technique, and get to look at beautiful pictures. Except we're going to do something a little different this week. Let's start by introducing a great photographer, the host of our show, Catherine Hall. Hi, Catherine. Hi, everyone. Catherine Hall. So much Net. For joining us. And uh, before we get into our tip of the week, we're going to ask people to help us. Yes, we are. I want to say one of the thing, favorite things about the show is all the community building and support in awesome guest suggestions yeah and they're coming in from so many different channels that it's really difficult for me to organize everything so we set up a forum for people to come in they can do guest suggestions show topics vote on things and um, it should be uh, very exciting so, so what is, is the website it's 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 brand new it's, it's blank it's blank so we're inviting so we'd you like to, to change come that <laughs> yes please it's like a tip jar with nothing in it and the address is? Uh, it is twitphoto.feedbackroad.com. So go to twitphoto.feedbackroad.com. You have to create an account. And then yes. if there's a photographer that you've seen that you like, maybe you've seen his or her work in a magazine or a photo book or at an art show or whatever, if you go there, suggest the name. And then keep going back because there'll be some suggestions, we hope, over the next uh, week or so. And we want you to vote, right? So, yes. so the ones that get the most votes, are we're going to We're going to bring on the show. Yeah. And then you can also say, oh, we want to bring this person back, or can you do That's this true. topic? You know, so it's really wide open, and the goal with it is to cater the show to you guys and what you want to see. Yes. So, good. It's very exciting. Twitphoto.feedbackroad.com. Thanks for setting that up. That's I great. I forget the URL. <laughs> and then we also have we have a full pack show today. We got a great. We're gonna do. A, I'm gonna do a live guest. demo tip. You're gonna do a live demo. Then we're gonna talk to Frank Mio, who is yes. an agent. Frank, yes. thank you for being here. And we're then really we actually have one of his me. photographers coming on too. On so, Skype. so the idea of having an agent on is so we can talk a little bit about the business, right? If we'd like, yeah. And you also have a book we're going to talk about that has it's a it's a photography book with no pictures, and we'll explain <laughs> we'll explain how that works. Yeah, exactly. In just a little bit, and then Stay you're gonna tuned. we're gonna have a how photographer have a via photography Skype with no pictures. And yeah. who's the photographer? One of his represented photographers. Great. So we'll talk about the agent photographer relationship. Oh, that'll be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited for that. Yeah, totally I'm fun. Dying to dig deep. But before okay, here we, we go. do that, yes. Before so, we do that, Frank. Poor Frank's yeah. been sitting here for an hour waiting to go on. <laughs> is that all it is? That's no. It seems like five. I know. <laughs> we're gonna get up and we're gonna do a photo shoot. Yes. What is your tip? Well, so I love soft light. Yeah. But I also love drama. Yeah. So when I was first getting involved with photography, one of the things that I was taught was the bigger the source, the softer the light. And I, there was a big piece missing from that lesson. But remember, though. we talked last week about dramatic everything's, lighting. Everything's relative, And though. it wasn't soft, right? So how do we get it? Well, the thing is, is that the size of the source is important. However, it's really relative to the subject. So you could have a huge soft box. And if it's far away, relative to the soft. subject, it's very small. So right. it's actually a hard light. Oh, it's harder the farther. Yeah. Ah, it's like the reverse, it's kind of counterintuitive. inverse square law. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. like the closer you get to something. That's right. It's brighter. The yeah. bigger it is, Got it. if you will. So um, you could have a huge softbox far away and the light still harsh, but you could have a small softbox right on top of the subject and it's going to be softer right. than the huge softbox. Okay. So we're gonna, I'm going to walk you through this right Show now. Show me because I don't believe it. Because this you. is really important. I, I don't I, believe it. <laughs> I need to see it. We're going to, yeah. So yeah. Catherine's going to get up. I'll narrate while you walk. Yeah, I'm going to squeeze by. And then if You're going to go that way, really? Yeah, so I don't tangle you up. Good luck. <laughs> I don't think we... We didn't really make that for... You, she's tiny. She fit right through that. Is there... All right, and Ryan's going to help. Do we have a... Um, okay, so if, some, if Frankie can hand me that camera, Oop. that would be great. All right, there's your, there's your camera. And then Liz is missing. She's going to be my we subject. We need a model. 
Yeah, Liz is going to be my subject. Yeah, so we're going to get Liz Romero, who is, uh, everybody knows, is the, the girl who bounces in the background. Yes. <laughs> but so, is also gorgeous. And by the way, a great singer, as I found out on Sunday night oh, with our land that. party. We were doing oh, a little wow. uh, rock band, and That's she was cool. good. All, All right, right, so she's your model. There we go. So, thank you, Liz. So right now, our light is six feet away. And bouncing off the ceiling. And what we're going to do, so, lower uh, it down. Uh, we're not going to bounce it off the ceiling. It's in a soft box. And that, it's in a small soft box. Okay. And so what that is, is a diffuser, really, right? So there's a light inside, and yeah, there's the some soft box material is going diffusing to make the soft, the Well, what the soft box does is it makes the source bigger. So you take right. a light that's, say, this big, mm -hmm. right? And then you put in a soft box, all of a sudden it's this big. Right. So if you're going for softer light, then putting a soft box is going to help you achieve that. Diffuses it. Yeah. So once again, two factors. One is how big is the, the source. Right. In our, in our case, the soft box. But also relative to the subject. Can't forget that one. Okay. So we're going to show why relativity matters so much. So here's, uh, here's Liz. Hold on. Yeah. Let me uh, get the I'm going to do one shot. Right now, the soft box, yeah. And whoops, I'm on the bad It doesn't setting. look that bright. Now, I have to say, uh, the camera is, uh, I'm on a, bad setting. sucks up light, our, our video cameras. But if you were here you in the studio, you don't have to smile, she, Liz. She you can just, you can just chill. <laughs> you can get a real smile. Okay. Now, what's Ryan doing? He's just doing a little fill. So on he's, the, he's bouncing yeah, the light. We only in. have one light. I always recommend using a little fill if we have one light. Got it. So we can look at the screen and we can see the softness on, on um, let me go up bigger. Hold on. Let's go into develop. We can see a shot full sc full screen. Oh, look how pretty you are. Isn't that great? Doesn't that look good? Yeah. Okay, so it's frozen. Nice smile. It's frozen, so I can't move it. I'm going to actually go. underexpose it, it, you went through it a little a bunch bit. Of them. Okay. Hold on, let me do another one. Underexposed. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, wait, we need our... We need a bouncing effect. We need the bounce. We need our fill. The fill's in the frame. Liz is so good. They're wondering so, how we got Liz so not to patient. bounce. So <laughs> patient. <laughs> so if it's going to go through, here we go. The joy of, okay. Oh, look at that. So it made a see, big difference. You can really... see how the light is on her face. Yeah. It's soft, but it's, we're going to watch how much softer it gets. So, so now you're going to move it closer. We're moving it closer. Which is kind of counterintuitive, I would think, because there's more light, it would be less soft. But you stop the camera down more. I'm going to adjust for exposure. Right. But the exposure is not going to ever change the softness. Okay. What's going to change the softness is how big. So <laughs> if you think about inverse square law, she, the light just moved twice as close. Twice as close. However, that's That means four it's four times, times more light. Right, yeah. The, Half the distance, four times you bigger. get four times more light. Yeah, four yeah. times bigger. And I'm going to stay exactly where I was. So we'll take a look at these shots as they come in. So that was the one before we moved it. In a second, you'll see the one yeah. after we moved it. Uh, it's going down the tether to Lightroom, which is... It does look uh, harder. How interesting. It was actually supposed to be soft. No. It's supposed first to be softer? One, first one's harder. First one's harder. Let's okay, before I'll, just take, I'll just take your word for it. You know what? So it, you it's, I'm seeing it's from the... Uh, from the brightness point of view, but, but I see what close. you're saying. Go really close. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Go now, just go right closer. up on there. Oh. Well, right in her face. <laughs> right in my face. Poor girl. I gotta bring it around. Yeah, show every imperfection on my face. <laughs> Catherine does a lot of portrait photography and a lot of brides, okay. Liz, so when you and when Alex you, um, finally tie there, the knot. Ryan, it's in the full cards in there. Okay. okay, bring it up, Ryan, a little bit. So bring we have the distance there. again. That means now we're going the eight The full card's gonna be in there, but that's for the for the demo, it's fine. You, you, you would crop that out, obviously. Yeah, we just, yeah. I would, this is just for... Look at that. It did get softer. So anyway, How interesting. The point of the story is that the closer the light is, the Look at softer that. the light. That's pretty. And you still have the catch lights in her eyes and everything, so Yeah, that's nice. so the goal is whenever I'm shooting portraits and I'm shooting a bride, for example, or a woman or anyone You'll where, bring the light in. Where I want it's the light to be nice and soft and flattering. Yeah then the closer you get it to them, I will get it so it's literally right out of frame. Right. And Interesting. then the light's going to be softer. Closer is softer. A good tip from Catherine. Thank you, Catherine. See if you can squeeze through again, and we're going to say hello to our guest for today, Frank, who's going to help by rearranging the, the furniture. <laughs> he does it all. He does it all. No ego here. I'm going to just Not read explained. a little bit about Frank Mio from the, from the uh, fly page of his book, Captured in the Mind, Mind Prints. 
by Frank Mio. And it says, Frank Mio was born in Brooklyn, New York, which you'll know the minute he opens his mouth. You, you That's haven't nice, Leo. Yes, you do. How long has That's it been? That's an ethnic slur. No, it's not. Bro oh. We love Brooklyn. All right. Did you know then that Leo fine. grew up? He was okay. born then in Manhattan? That's good. I'm from the other side of the bridge, but that's okay. okay. Studied advertising at Baruch College, and then you went to work for Levine, Huntley, Schmidt, Plaper, and Beaver. Plapper? Plapler. Plapper. Alley and uh, Gargano. A couple of big ad agencies. Uh, director of photography at Getty Images, and now you have a uh, photo agency that's been doing this since '85 called Mio Represents. Actually, well, now it's, it's that's closer. older. It's called the Photo Closer. The Photo Closer. Right. Why'd you change it? Well, we changed the model, and now we're an online search engine for photographers. So, art buyers, editors, clients who are looking for photographers anywhere in the world can come to our site and search for a photographer based on location and based on specialty. So n the normal kind of uh, way it works is you'd have a stable, just like a, uh, an agent for an actor, you'd have a stable of people you represent. Exactly. People would come to you and say, let's see your book, Frank. Let's see the book. I know you represent uh, Sally. Let's see your book. And so you'd have a few photographers. Now you have how many? Now we have 65 and we're growing. So In every category, it seems like. I mean, right, look at all these specialties. Yeah, we have... Um, I guess it's about 35, 40 categories. Wow. So what happens is you're looking for a, um, a fashion photographer in Paris. You can hit on fashion, and photographers will come up. And as you scroll through, you then can find the photographer based on that location wow. and based on that specialty. Uh, and I should let you know that Live Books did, just did the redesign on the, uh, on nice, the site. Actually, I like so, um, and so when you click on that image... Um, that image will get large, and then there's a direct link to that photographer's website. And then off you go. Does so this now, change your model as a business? You have 65 photographers now. Or do they have other agents too? Or Well, I'm not in, in the classic sense. You're not an agent age, anymore. Right. That's, so what we are, but what we did was we used my experience of being in the business for 25, 30 years and knowing all the art buyers and all the agencies, um, editors, that you know, people will come to our site when they're searching. And our, our whole business model is when you're searching for a photographer, think of us as one of two, three places that you go to, and then we feel like it's worthwhile for the photographers to be on the site. Got it. So we're, we're guaranteeing photographers exposure. Right. And then the day, they have to win the day by their website and their content. So that's why we screen the photographers that get on the site so they're at a certain level. Um, and this way it makes everybody happy in that the other photographers that want to be on the site realize they're coming into a good, uh, a good venue. And art buyers and art directors and career directors who are coming to the site know that they're going to see quality work. Why should a photographer get an agent? Yeah, that's what I want to know. That, you know, that, you know, if this is a seven-hour show, we could probably get into <laughs> all, all, all the details on why. Um, I don't know that every photographer needs an agent. Agents can supply, I mean, agents are great to really nurture a career of a photographer. And at different points of, uh, of your career development, you need an agent to get you to the next level. Um, but you can do a lot of that on your own as well as a photographer. You just have to have, you know, maybe the right coaching, maybe the right advisor. Um, so, th and there's a lot of nuances in that, in that why, why would a, uh, an agent take on a brand new photographer? They could see a lot of hope in that photographer. There's a great vision. Um, and they could see that they can make money. Because, you know, the game for, on both sides of the equation is to make money for the agent, make money for the photographer, and creatively you just keep on growing. That's, you know, that's of course the dream. But you can do it on your own, and, you know, then you have to think of who's the right agent to be with. Right. So you have to do a lot of research as a photographer to say, you know what, I, I've done my research on... Agent ABC, whoever she is or he is, and I'm going to be a good fit for that particular person's stable. So there's a, and there's a lot of work involved in that photographer finding the right rep, and then the rep saying, "I see that you have you know a great body of work, and you're going to grow." Or I see that you're a great photographer now, and I could manage to get you better work, get you higher fees. So you have you know each side has to weigh out what's you know what's, what is it going to cost me in time, in money, in practical sense, to, to join this together, to get married. And that's really the intense piece of it, is that we all, you know, 
agents, we all get married before we even date. And that's... The, 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 I like it. You know, but that's really true. Yeah. You have three or four lunches, right. you make a couple of calls, you know, this photographer's great or this agent is a wonderful person. And then all of a sudden, you guys are in business. Right. And, you know, sometimes, it doesn't happen often, you're looking at that person across from a table and you realize that he or she is a mani maniacal, maniacal person right. in that it, did, it didn't make sense to go into business. Right. You know, so you really ha so for everyone has to do this dance to make sure that you, know, you see the world in the same way, in, in a lot of ways, not just the photography, but in how is this person going to be on a shoot? How is this person going to be in negotiation? You know, that's one thing that, you know, being in the business a long time, you know, 99% of my photographers, I always felt we were in it together. Sometimes we had to pass up work because there was another project. Like I, I represented uh, Ron Haviv. A great, a great, great photojournalist. Photo yeah. yeah. And we, we actually had him on the show. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we, we always knew that if a project came through, you know, as it relates to a commercial job, um, and at the same time, a, a project came through that was important to him as it relates to his photojournalism, that would always weigh out. He'd choose a photo journal. He would choose, yeah. in, in, in a second. We were up for... And that has to be okay with you, even though right. it's going to cost you money in a way, because oh, you, have, you got work for him. We had a job, you know, a very, very big fee, a couple of years into our relationship, and, you know, he was, in fact, going to be embedded uh, when we went to Iraq. Right. And it was between that and a job in... And he chose embedded, of it, course. It wasn't sure. even a decision. Yeah. But he recognized that I felt the same way. Good. And I never made him feel guilty. You have guilty. to share that yeah. vision. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that, that is really, really a big deal as it relates to that relationship. How do you know when it's time to get an agent? Because I think there are probably a lot of photographers who watch this show don't are not represented. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think, too. I mean, I even wonder, should I have an agent? Should I not have an agent? Do you not agent? have an agent? Well, and, and here's, here comes the question. If you're really busy... You're you working. Think, Why would I want to share what the What do pot? I need an agent? You yeah. know? But so, maybe I'm not getting the right type of work, and maybe I'm not charging as much as I could, or enlighten right. me. Well, well th that's the thing. It, you know, it's the scale. Sometimes it's going to benefit you, and then sometimes you're going to feel like you're giving too much, and then sometimes the rep is saying, I gave you too much because I introduced you to my clients that you normally would not have gotten. Right. Yeah. So you know, it, that's why I say it really is a marriage. It's really a very intense thing to go through. And like you say, if you're working all the time, why do I need this rep to get in my way? Right? But, you know, you almost have to shed your skin and say, long term, I really want to be with somebody like a Marianne Campbell or a Frank Mayo or you know, Howard Bernstein. You know, all, all these good reps who can, you know, open doors for you that you normally would not be able to open. Um, so you get a different kind yeah. of work, you get better work. That, well, that's the hope. And, what's and, the bottom line? What, what are we talking to open the door? Like, what well, are the normal percentages? What do you give up? <laughs> <laughs> well, so, I mean, the relationships are different in that, all right, so you have a whole bunch of house accounts, uh -huh. right? So you could use that as saying, okay, you know, we'll, we'll go into business, it's a 70-30 split or a 65-35 split, whatever it is, and you say, well, that's fine, but I'd like to keep some of my house accounts. So we make an arrangement. You have to work it out. Yeah. You, yeah, you have yeah, to work, work it out. Yeah. You've got to be flexible. Because yeah. if not, but the good thing about it is, if now we're doing this dance, we're doing the negotiation, and I realize that you just you know, are so pig-headed about this particular <laughs> issue, it says to me, I probably don't want to be in business with that person because that's the way it may, may be moving forward. Yeah. Whereas if you say, well, I'd like to keep them for two years, my house accounts, and I say, well, why don't we do it a year and make it ten accounts? Just something to, to, and in fact, you could do it as a test. You say, well, you know what? That's a good idea. How about if we do a year and a half and it's eight? Whatever it is, you then see that that person is flexible. And that's somebody you want to be in business with versus somebody, no, this is the way it has to be, and I'm done. Our, well, that's because right. any relationship. You say right, it's like a marriage. Exactly. There has it to be really compromise. Is. Are, are, good, are good agents good photographers also, or is it not necessary? That you not necessary at all. A lot of people you know, don't shoot at all as far as reps are concerned. Yeah. So you, you, know, you really have to do your due diligence. And as from a photographer's standpoint, call the art buyers. What do you know about um, ah. this rep? Oh, that's what do you smart. know about ask that? Alliance. Yeah. Ask the Ask the other photographers in their yeah. stable. Yeah. You know, all, all those things, I mean, that, that's, but the other thing that's really important from a photographer's standpoint, and I always tell them, you know, how do you get to the point where now you're going with a rep and you are relying on that person for your livelihood? It doesn't make any logical sense in that you should know 
all the ad agencies. You should know all the art buyers. You should know all the creative directors from the standpoint of it's your small business as well. Don't rely on one other person because that one other person could either get out of business right. or the relationship doesn't work. Now you're high and dry because you relied on the rep. Nowadays, everyone needs to know the different aspects of the business so it makes you a better business person. So when I tell you that you know, we're working for, we've got a job and it's a pro bono account, for instance, and we're not going to make a lot of money. And you say, but that's going to take a lot of my time and this, this and that. But then I know that if I come to you and I say it's a good pro bono account, you're willing to do that because we think on the back end we're going to win a lot of awards. Mm -hmm. Because doing this pro bono, in fact, we did that with Ron Haviv. He just got this, uh, we got an account for Crystal Meth out of, uh, out of a San Francisco ad agency. It doesn't really need anybody to sell it. I mean, it kind of sells itself, right? Right. We, or is it against Crystal Meth? It's against Crystal Meth. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to listen. To I'm just teasing you. <laughs> no, but, but we said we really want this account. And there were five photographers bidding this. Yeah. And two in New York, two in L.A., and one in San Francisco. And in San Francisco, that agency had already worked with a uh, photographer. So you're getting in the door with an agency. Right. But our odds are one in five. Right. And plus, they worked with a guy in, in San Francisco. They already got somebody. Right. Yeah. And we got the job. You did? We did get the job. And the awards... So were, how do you do that? What do you do? You pound, I mean, Ron sells... Ron's great. Right, Ron's. A, a so you talk. go there with Ron's portfolio, his so, book, so and you it, say it, it's talking on the phone. They've already seen the book. They know. They've seen his website. They know that he is. They know what they're uh, getting. You know, he's he's a great photojournalist, right? And he does you know wonderful work on and on and on. So and it's a pro bono account. So everyone they tell you, um, we've got you know we've got X amount of dollars. Pro bono means we we're not going to give you any. No, no, well, you're going to have money because in this particular to cover expenses, right? To cover expenses and a little bit for fee. Each one okay. is different. Okay. But we wanted it really badly, so we did the estimate, and so you, you have you have the amount that they that they can spend. So if say the amount is fifty thousand, right? You've got to come in somewhere between forty seven, fifty two. If you come in there, you really listen. If you come in at thirty, thirty five, you look like a schmuck, right? Like what are you doing? That means you're not doing the production. And if you come in at sixty, you're really not so you, listening. You need to know what it's going to cost Ron, right. what the market will bear. You need to, this is something that's different about, say, a photographic agent than, say, a theatrical agent. Right. Because a theatrical agent, the job is kind of a set fee. Maybe you negotiate it. You're actually, in a way, bidding, aren't you? And, oh, absolutely. And, and I'm bidding you're, against You're creating five. bids. Right. And, and in this case, I'm bidding with five. There's five of us, right? Right. One guy is actually in the, in the city where this agency is. Two are right down the block in L.A. Right. And, and, and we're in New York. So w my biggest job is what do I do to get that creative team to get on a plane to fly to New York, get out of their offices, and on and on and on. Right. And that's really, and when you stop and think about it, and everyone knows the number. So you really have to do something that's special, that makes them think of you in a totally different light more than anyone else. What did you, and so we what did, did you do? We did two things. <laughs> I, made, I made Ron write a, um, made, I suggested to Ron <laughs> to write a creative brief. And the brief is something, you know, that it's unfiltered. You know, it's you talking to the creative team and why you want to do this, right? And I don't think anyone else did that. And that was great that Ron did that. But we did another thing. In the estimate, I put in for a drug consultant because I felt that no one was going to be able to direct those people like somebody who's actually been through it. So they call me, and I have it in, in the estimate uh, for two days, $500 each day. And the art buyer calls me and says, Frank, you know, what, what's this about? I said, well, you know, I think we need somebody on the set um, to c be able to convey to the actors and actresses and the photographer what the pain is to be on crystal meth. Yeah. So yeah. they said, well, what happens if we bring somebody? I said, that's fine. I just think it's really important to have it there, right? So that got us That the was job. a differentiator, too. That was yep. the thing because, you know, you, you listen to this guy. And he's talking from a place that none of us have ever been. Right. And he's telling these young actors and actors, and he's telling Ron, you feel an overt desperation, you know, with things crawling in your body. That's why crystal meth um, kids have all these scratching. scars. Yeah. They're scratching these, these bugs yeah. out of their bodies, right? And we knew going in that that was, that was one of the big reasons why they came to us. Two days after our shoot, they called me and said, what was that consultant's name? 
we have to have him on the TV shoot. They didn't even, the, the guy who did TV didn't have the guy there mm. on the TV. So they used our guy on the TV shoot as well. And that, you know, it, it's one of those things where, like, you, you really, like, pat yourself on the back. That was a good idea. You know, it was a little bit creative and a little bit functional, but we, we made it happen. And that was really, really great. I mean, that, that's what, you know, like I've, one of my photographers years ago got the cover of Time magazine, uh, and I've gotten jobs for an awful lot of money. But, you know, that job, you know, for the importance of what it is to deter kids from these drugs, you know, it, nothing feels better than that. Yeah. And, and, and as a rep, you know, who, you know, everyone thinks about, you know, they only want the money and this and that, you know, to put your place, you know, put yourself in that space of really caring and getting involved in the product, um, it was totally gratifying, really gratifying. We're talking to uh, Frank Mio, photo agent, and now uh, photo search engine. I guess the, <laughs> the site is thephotocloser.com. All right. We'll talk more. And I want to bring Bruce uh, in because uh, Bruce Eisenberg is a photographer and one of your clients, and they can talk a little bit about the relationship. But yeah. before we do all of that, let me talk a little bit about Squarespace. Dot com, the secret behind exceptional websites. If you uh, are a photographer, if you, if you do anything, if you're a student, you need to have a website. Why? Well, because if you don't create a website, one will be created for you. People will post pictures of you on Facebook. or th They'll control your reputation. They'll control your image. They'll control what Google says about you. That's why you need your own site where you put your own stuff, where you show yourself to your best advantage. And Squarespace makes it so easy. Uh, visit squarespace.com and, and take the product tour. There's as uh, uh, Right at the front page is a big green button that says try it free. You click that button and you can use every bit of Squarespace for two weeks. All you need is a name, an email address, a name for your site, and a password. That's it. They're not going to bug you. You get 100% of all the Squarespace tools, including the 13 new template redesigns, the 85 new style options, the two brand new templates. You get the 130, I'm sorry, 300 Google font library uh, amazing font library it just it your site will look gorgeous and it's easy to do you don't have to have any css or coding experience it's all point and click drag and drop now if you are a css coder if you knew the the know the high-end web technologies you can also use those in fact you'll be pleased to hear that they've got a developer friendly css editor that pops out the window and full screen it colorizes your code there's undo, there's find and replace. Look at these sites. These are all sites created by Squarespace. And this is one of the things I like about Squarespace. The best hosting, yes. But also, because of their system, no two Squarespace sites look alike. You know, a lot of times you say, oh, I know that site. That's been, that, they did that with WordPress. They all look the same. Not with Squarespace. Each one is unique. Each one is beautiful. Each one reflects you. They've got great resources for help 24-7. And if you go to uh, workshops.squarespace.com, you'll see they also have free workshops that you can take live webinars to get better at uh, coding your site. I shouldn't say coding, at designing your site. It's so great. For bloggers, for photographers, they've got a great portfolio widget. Flickr, Twitter, social media buttons, Google Maps, forms, and more. And, of course, SEO built in so your site is searchable and easy to find. Click that green button. Try it free. If you decide to buy, if you decide to buy, it's very affordable. Tony, click the pricing button. They've changed the pricing structure, and it really... $8 a month. This is hosting plus the best software ever. Or you can get the most, the unlimited. And if you subscribe for a year or you subscribe for a month, I'm going to get you 10% off your first purchase. All you have to do is use that offer code right there, Twit, Twit Photo 4, T-W-I-T-P-H-O-T-O -T -O and the number 4, and you'll get 10% off even if you buy a whole annual subscription. That is awesome. Don't throw your money down the toilet like me with a custom website. <laughs> I know the feeling, believe me. Squarespace.com. You can do it yourself, and you're going to get a great site, I promise you. Twit Photo 4 is our offer code. We've got Bruce on the line. Yeah. He better say nice things about Frank. That's all so, I can say. So uh, before we even bring in Bruce, are you guys, <laughs> nice is it typical for Frank. a photographer to look for an agent, or do you actually look for your photographers it, it's both well, ways? Well, and how did you guys connect? Um, I'm going to let Bruce tell you. You want me to answer that? Oh, Bruce, great information. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Frank actually met my partner, Tova Bonham, in New York about a year or so ago. And Frank was one of those few people that Tova came back and told me she really liked and that we should keep in touch with. And when he started the photo closer, 
he got in touch with us, asked us if we'd be interested, and we were. It was at the right time. And how has the relationship played out? What do you, what's the value you felt that's been brought to the table? Well, for me, listen, it, it's all about reach. I mean, you know, we don't live in a world anymore where, uh, where reps are just taking in books and they're being seen by, you know, a small amount of art buyers in a given situation. You know, you're in a world driven by the web where reach is everything. And what they're doing is they're driving traffic to their website, which in turn drives traffic to our website and gives us a lot of exposure that we wouldn't normally get. Do you still have a separate agent, separate representation, Bruce? You know, we decided early on that we were going to take a little bit of a different route. And and the reason really has to do with... uh, my background and with Tova's background. She's been a magazine publisher for over 20 years, and I was a talent agent for 20 years. <laughs> you know how to do it. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, the business of representation and her reach into the fashion market with you know, all of the heads of the fashion companies that she worked with for so many years uh, just made it a little bit different for us uh, in the early days. Um, and yet, we, this this tells you how much things have changed because you still need the photo closer. It's not you may you may be able to represent yourself, but people aren't just coming to representatives saying, "What do you got? Show me your book." They're using the web now. Right. That, that's oh, the thing. No. That, that that's one of the things I, I when we first uh, did our dance, Bruce and I, is that there's so many places to be. Right. And you know, if we all knew the one place to be, we'd all be there. Right. But there isn't one place. To your point, you've got to be a little bit everywhere, and that's what made. You know, seeing Bruce's worst work first was the thing that made you know them very attractive to me. In that, you know, I want that kind of quality work on the site. But having a real sense of the marketplace as a business person, as I was saying before, that's the kind of person you want to team with. Is that they get the reality of the business of where we are today, and that's why it, it's it's a nice match. And we were very fortunate to see each other in Palm Springs just uh, last week, right. and that and that. You know, and seeing each other and sitting down, the three of us, Bruce Tover and myself, you know, like you realize, wow, we really did this right in that this is like we connected right away. I mean, I don't wear a hat, but, you know, we uh, Bruce is going to get me a hat the next time he's in the city. What, what's that all about? You <laughs> got to wear a hat? No, no. Everybody was club? wearing hats and he was so cool looking in the hat. And I don't look good in a hat. You know, it's just. That's it's just okay. Not, in not June, my thing. I'm going to get you there. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, so that, that's it. it's, a, it's not going to stop now until I'm, you know, uh, until I get a hat. But, but, but that's, see, that's the thing that, like, that you can there's a personal meet. connection the, yeah like yeah. You, you like the guy i mean yeah. he may not be the best looking guy but you like the guy <laughs> his wife is stunning yeah I know. <laughs> so that's you interesting know, so it's not enough just to be on 500 pixels it's not enough to, to be on google plus uh, or i'm sure there are other professional portfolio yeah. you got to be everywhere a little bit a, yeah. a little bit yeah yeah. And, and dedicated to, to those yeah. places. And your job now, Frank, is to get the photo closer to be one of those real pl- the places that people go. Right. That, and, and that's where we are as, as it relates to the art buyers and editors. That, you know, they have two, three places to go. And, we're, you know, we're, we're working to be the top one. But we're probably in the two or three places that they'll go to. Has that changed how people uh, talk to agents now? I mean, it used to be you'd have a, you'd have a rep that you work with, uh, maybe a few reps you work with as a buyer. Right. And you'd call them and say, hey, send me a book. I need somebody who can do commercial work or whatever. Does that change now? No, I, I think, you know, from, from my standpoint, because I know all the reps. That's what I've been doing for 25 years. Right. So the, the one hurdle was to make sure that the reps didn't see me as their competition. Right. Because we are now allies. That's right. Yeah. We are now allies in, 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 in the purest sense of the word. Right. And for them, you know, what's Frank doing? What's Frank doing? Because everyone He's always... He's not tr- repping anymore? He's right. got this that, search exactly. thing? What is that? But, but what I had was I had a reputation right. that was being a decent guy. And that's really paid out, you know, now in that, yeah, if Frank's doing this, let's find out what it is and, you know, recognize that this business model can only help us. So I have a lot of reps calling me as well. You know, what's going on? We'd love to be involved. That's interesting. Really, the business is changing. Yeah, Bruce, got- are, are you getting work from the photo closer? Has that helped you? We've gotten a lot of traffic to the website, and that's really what we expected. Listen, I think that the, you know, the misnomer is that you know, photographers have a sense that when they sign with a rep that 
the world completely changes. Yeah, and now it, I can sit back yeah. and I don't have to do yeah, anything. It, it isn't like that at all. In fact, the truth of the matter is, is that reps are really looking for photographers to, to help them drive business to their own agencies as much as the opposite way around. That's interesting. So it's, yeah. it's very much becoming a, uh, a, a two-way street. Um, and, you know, listen, the interesting thing about reps also is that it's a bit of a fragmented business. You know, different reps have different relationships in different areas. Some have fashion brand relationships. Some have cosmetic brand relationships. Some have editorial relationships that are better. Sometimes it's regionalized. Sometimes there are some reps that have a little bit more business uh, on a national basis. So it's almost like you could have four or five different reps and it, it wouldn't be too much in many ways. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. So it's not typical, you know, again, I only know theatrical representation. It's very different from a, because you'd normally you'd have an exclusive. You don't have an exclusive with a rep. But then how are you measuring this? Like, so you're saying you're getting, you're getting your sort of, income from the percentages but if if he's getting traffic versus jobs how does that pan well, out the, the, the hope is that the increased traffic will lead to jobs Correct. so so and, and then he'll give you five bucks no <laughs> he doesn't have to get, you know people only pay to be on the site they don't need you know, okay so with you it's a it's different right, it, it, it's a one-off now Got in, it. In, in some cases you may have a photographer who doesn't have a rep and a project comes in that they're in over their head we can help them. Oh, that's, that's we can good. Do, we can that's do the what estimate. I think would be the we, most important thing is the bidding. Right. The estimating and the neg negotiation, we'll do that for them. And then they get the job, and then they feel like they can do the production, off they go. If not, then we can then produce the job. Why is she jumping? She does. Uh, don't pay no attention to that. Okay. Um, so <laughs> We're talking about Liz, who sits on a ball, and um, she has a lot of spare energy. She has a lot of energy. And she's always bouncing. Okay. So what made you choose Frank, and what were you looking for in that relationship? Um, I think that we were really looking for an extension of, of the team that we've already got in place. You know, to me, I look at this a, a little bit differently, because to me, what Frank is doing is more of an extension of our of the marketing that we already do in our studio, and and we do very vigorously in in our studio. Uh, and if there is any situation where we feel that uh, look, it's always great to have a buffer wh when you're negotiating. I personally don't do any of the negotiations. My my partner does all of the negotiations. And if there was ever a point where she felt that. Uh, we needed to have somebody else in the bidding process, then she can call Frank on the phone and, and she can do that. And she can have him do that. And you're essentially paying for services that you use. And you're obviously paying at a much lower rate than, than the 30% the, the or 40% or whatever that you're, uh, that you're paying a classical rep. Um, but listen, you know, I said to Frank when we were in Palm Springs that I thought that, you know, there's probably a little bit of a, a hybrid that could develop out of this. I think this model is very new. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't preclude you using a, a, a traditional classical rep. But, you know, one thing that was said earlier that I found interesting, you know, in the, in the talent business uh, and in the music business, the buyers are the same for everybody. Right. Everybody's talking to the same concert promoters, right. you know, the same studio people. In this business, that's not necessarily true. You may have, a, listen, I have a very close friend who's a rep in Chicago, and she doesn't do, the, the contacts that she has have nothing to do with the business that we do in my studio. It's all Chicago. It's a, it's, it's a different fit. And yeah. the other reason that we were interested in, in Frank and we were glad that that uh, that that worked out was because he's a he's in New York, right? And our sensibilities is is really more New York based. We're New Yorkers first of all, and just from uh, a client perspective and a desire perspective, uh, New York is more suited to the kind of work that we do. Right. I love the work too. We're looking at Bruce's yeah. uh, website.
Yeah. Thank you so much. So how long, you talked about this marriage, how long are these relationships typically? Are they <laughs> lifetime? Are they not, years? It, like, what's the average that a photographer is with a particular rep? Each, each case is different, but, but I have to say, you know, and I'm very proud of the fact that, you know, some photographers I've had for 15, 20, 10 years, and, and you know, um, for me, these are the people that are putting my kids through college, <laughs> paying my mortgage. So you I want mean, that they, relationship to continue. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I want it to continue, but, but there comes an incredible bond sure. to that process. Sure. That though, you know, because you're in a freelance world, and, you know, those relationships are, are vital. You know, vital, you know, in a practical sense and vital very much in an emotional sense. So are sense. you the Ari Gold? Were you the Ari Gold of uh, photography? I race? would have to say that. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's how he was introduced to me, actually. Yeah. Really? Is yeah. that true? Yeah. yeah. Um, Epson's marketing director. If, you, if you've seen you know. Entourage, that's, yeah. the, uh, that's the agent yeah. on Entourage. Yeah. So, who, is, who is a man, he he but was, he's a... Uh, Pitbull as well for his clients, right? He was mentioned as the, the, the rep of New York. That's how he was introduced. But well, I, so photographers that want to be, what's the biggest, you know, so you submit a portfolio, what's the biggest sort of faux pas or mistake that people make when they're submitting their work for representation? Well, you know what it is? Listen, listen to Bruce. Bruce, you know, that's the kind of guy you want to be with. Right. A humble guy recognizes your value, sees he's got, you know, his own system working, and you're an addition. Right. That, you You're know, complimentary, you, though. That, that's exactly what it is. You know, it is so incredibly simple. Yeah. Whereas, you know, I've sat across you know, somebody that, you know, they, they, you know, they are the greatest thing since sliced bread. That doesn't fit with my personality. Whereas if I sat with Bruce and I talked to him, Bruce, I'm going to make you a star. Yeah. He'd run for the hills, you know, <laughs> in, in a second, you know, and, and you heard him say, you know, he, he's a New York guy. You know, like everyone, you, know, you have that feel, right? And you know when it fits and you know when it doesn't. And you, you know, can talk about the Jets. So and that's you talk good about too. the Jets. Well, Nothing you know, wrong with that. Yeah. So the personality actually is more important than the actual. I mean, the work gets it's them both. in the door. It, it's both. I mean, work has to be terrific, but you know, as important is can I work with that guy? Right. Can I work with that lady? Yeah, I think as a photographer, you have to manage the expectations. I mean, if you're looking for a babysitter, you you, you got to find somebody else. I don't reps today in any business don't want to be babysitters. And that's a very important thing for, for photographers when they start to get, you know, into business and, and looking for reps. They have to remember that it's a business for everybody, you know. And as a photographer, you have to manage your business. You, you, if you're going to call Frank on the phone in the middle of it, you, you know, before you go into a shoot going, listen, I'm looking for an assistant. You, you don't you're not at the level where you should have a rep. If you understand your brand and you are trying to extend it and all the other infrastructures in place and you have the correct expectations of what you're going to get from a rep, then you're ready for a rep. Bruce, I want to thank you for joining us. Bruce's website, BruceEisenberg.com. Yeah, thank you so Great much, Great stuff. Bruce. I really thanks. appreciate it. Thanks for thanks, joining us. Thanks for being so patient. My pleasure. All Take right. care. Take Bye. care. Thanks. We've got one more thing I want to talk about, which is this. This is really interesting. Have you, Bruce, do you know this book, Mind yes, Prince? I, yes, I do. Frank was kind enough to give us one last week and signed it, and we think it's brilliant. It's really an interesting idea. Would you describe, Frank, what the idea was before I, oop, don't look, before I show people <laughs> the book, and then I'll show them the book. So, uh, as, we, as we were saying before, if I say to you, uh, Monica with a cigar, Clemens taking steroids, Pete Rose with his bookie, um, <laughs> Michael Vick at a dogfight, all these things you've seen... You know that are clear in your head, but the fact is that you've never seen any of them. There's not pictures of them. Th there's, no. there's no photographs. So just by reading type, you have a visual experience that's searing in your brain that you've never seen. So as you go through the pages, um, these it, are images. You're it, actually it, painting it, it images. It actually of words. just right. right in your head. Isn't that you amazing? Know, so Trump with morning hair. Nixon, Nixon and Kissinger drunk. Um, I like yeah. Trump with morning hair. That's right, I mean, who, ha who yeah. hasn't seen that? <laughs> the Menendez brothers. You know, on, they, they wow. go on and on and on. And I have to say, um, it, you know, it, it really came out of my wife and I going to uh, the Guggenheim Museum. Mm -hmm. And there was a show by Richard Prince, who, um, who is a world-known, you know, great, great artist. And what he does is he appropriates people's work. So he took... The Marlboro ads, the classic Marlboro yeah. ads. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of controversy over a lot this. Of, a lot of controversy. What did he do? 
what he does is he takes that photograph, yeah. re-photographs it, crops it, blows it up, and now it becomes his own. So R.J. Reynolds, the original photographer or the model in those ads, cannot go after him because he calls it art. Oh, that's very challenging. Right. So for someone, so he's really challenging the notion of ownership. Right. Yeah. That's exactly right. And he sells prints. Wow. For a million, a million and a half. <laughs> You're kidding? No. And we have, you know, so after after seeing that show and the first, you know, it's a French term that I use for that. That's bull. <laughs> in that he can take. It, it seems he can a little, take somebody uh, else's work. Little something, huh? Yeah, he can take somebody else's work, call it his own. And you know, not give anything back to these other the other people involved. Right. So I said to my wife, I said, you know, that's why the regular Joe doesn't get art. That somebody can take somebody else's work, call it his own. You know, for the regular guy, they don't get that. You know, and I don't get my that. kid could do that. Right. Yeah. That's exactly that's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. So we leave the museum and that's when the thought came to me that we all create. No matter who we are, we create. And this, this book is really a byproduct. So in your mind, when I read this, I am now creating. That's right, you scene. are. You yeah. absolutely are. Yeah. Be, and I, I was saying before that when I showed this as a PowerPoint to uh, Dr. Barry Gordon from um, um, Johns Hopkins, he thought it was great in that it's word, word, and then puff, you know, your brain creates these visuals. Right. Right. And it, it's really, really, uh, it couldn't be more simple. But the thing that I love about it is that everyone gets it. People who are not creative get it the same way we all do. So the accountant, the milkman, the mailman, the lawyer, people who you know, don't think in those terms get it completely. This, this is high concept. But now Web9146 in our chat room is asking the question, how do, you, how do you do something like this? And you've got some tips for people who to publish a book, to get into the book business. How do you, well, how do, you do something like this? First thing, you've got to make sure your wife likes the idea, too. <laughs> That's Support. the most important thing. Support. That's how you're married 21 years. Yeah. Now right. I know. I understand. Right. So if your wife likes it, Ask the, the, the lady. You, you're yeah. halfway down the road. Yep. So, so what I did was I created these um, all within maybe two hours. I came up with about 60 of them. They're really right, right very away. pithy, strong. It's all a product of CNN and the non nonstop news media, yeah, yeah. you know, where they bang you enough to, to where, you, where mm -hmm. you get it. But what you have to do is, I did a PowerPoint of it, and I showed it to a lot of people. Mm. And everyone thought the same thing. This is a good idea. This is creative. It's this, it's that. So I wasn't in, in my own bubble thinking, this is a great idea. So I did that. Then I... Um, I was doing a shoot, one of my photographers was actually doing a shoot for Johns Hopkins with, uh, with the doctor. And, and at that time, so I sent him the PowerPoint. He was a neurologist. So this is like yeah. the no he, number he, one. He, he's the number one brain surgeon at Johns Hopkins. So he looked at it and he thought, wow, this is just a great, great idea. So, so tip number one is ask people what they think. Right. Get, get your feedback because we're all in our own little bubble. By the way, this would be a great audio book. And ask people that I want will to do the honest. audio book That's of this. It. I think the Yogi cut is Berra making sure you ask people that will be honest. Not your mom, not your road. sister. That's right. You know, <laughs> and, and, and I got a lot of critical friends you yeah. know, that would have said this is, you know, this, is, this is really yeah. dopey right. stuff. Right. And they, ask um, Bruce. He'll tell you the yeah, truth. Bruce, yeah. I mean, he's, he's a neighborhood <laughs> boy. Right. You know, that, 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 that's the way... And, and, and that's, that's what I got. I got a lot of great feedback. But what I knew, what I knew from being in business with photographers all these years, that if you're going to do it, yeah. you've got to do it right. You can't spend half the money. Or you, know, you can't do it on oh, the cheap. So well, you've got a true. great right. designer. That, that, that's, the, that's, that's the key. So I presented this book yeah. to the Art Directors Club in New York City and the Seven Gallery in Dumbo. Oh, wow. Now, when I showed it to Stephen Mays, he said... Don't show this to anyone else. We want to do it wow, first. That's great. So I, I mean, that this was hung in the, the seven, seven gallery. gallery. Wow. It For six weeks, right? You're an artist, yeah. Frank. It, it can't get better. You're an it artist. Can. You made Wait, it. Smiling ear to ear. <laughs> I, I, that, that's something that I'm so proud of. Now, I haven't made the money back that it's cost me to do the book and to frame it. But I recognize that I wouldn't have gotten, and the Art Directors Club, I would not have gotten those shows right. had it was not done right. Right. But... That's what got me on this show. That's what the well, biggest acclaim of all. Yeah. That's right. No, but, but, I don't know but, if that's but, really but, worth. You don't think you get your money's worth? I no, but, tell but you. just I mean, from from a standpoint of photography. No, I don't know what you mean. It was worth it. Right. It was absolutely. So sometimes worth photographers it. have yeah. to deviate from what they normally do on normal projects for the for the bigger end. Now, I didn't I didn't do the book to, to, for that particular reason. I did it for my own you know my own sensibility that you know. I, was, I came up with something, and I'm going to follow through on it. That's what drove, drove me. 
But the byproduct of is that I'm getting you know a lot of good areas to pr promote the photo closer, which makes everybody else happy. So you know so one one dovetails into the other. The tips are speak to people, get a lot of feedback. You did that. Find I like this. Find people who are extremely smart and helpful in areas where you lack expertise. This is a sign of strength, not weakness. Absolutely, it's I okay mean, to ask for help. I mean, I got a designer to you do. You got it. a great designer here, uh, Alec, Alec Veno. You oh. know who, who's an art director at an ad agency that I did yeah. jobs with. Really nice. And you know he saw it. You know as the PowerPoint. He says, you know, let, let me design it. Yeah, it's just beautiful. Who published the book? Oh, I can't show it. Uh, the self-published book. <laughs> okay. Let's not show that one. You know, Liberace in his other <laughs> underwear. That's good. I like that. Uh, take your time, do it right. You mentioned that. And then finally, and I love this because this is true of whatever you do, you must have blind passion from start to finish. That's it. W w without that, you know, y you're doing a paperback book. Yeah. Or, or, you, or, or you, you're not framing the show. Right. You know, you got it. Right. That's one you thing I've learned. It. You got it. If you do it right, then, you know, when the day is over, you say, you know what? No, I didn't make a lot of money on it. Right. Or I didn't do this, but I did it right. You know, like you, so you, you crossed all your T's, you dotted your I's. Where can people find this? Mind Prints by Frank Mio. Where is it in the bookstore? Frank, uh, yeah, you can or your website. It. On my website, frankmio.com. Frankmio.com. And before we cut, I have to sidetrack one second. You just did portfolio reviews when you're down Palm, Palm Springs. Springs. What would you say are one of the biggest kind of tips for viewers at home that are putting together their portfolio to be aware of? Um, see what your competition is doing. That's one. Make sure you use great, great images. You know, it, there, isn't, there isn't a number, a definitive number of 25 or 30, whatever that is. Just make sure all your work is really, really that good. That goes back to get help, seek, seek, seek advice. Help. That's it. You know, <laughs> from that, others. That's absolutely. And Bruce says, be yourself. That's Bruce it. Says, edit yourself. Have somebody else do the edit for you. Oh, don't yeah. do it yourself. Don't do it yourself. Yeah. Be I don't yourself, do... but don't do it yourself. No, right. I, that is the biggest weakness of all photographers is when they try Absolutely. to edit their own right. portfolio. Get right. Because we're all in our own little bubbles. That's right. And sometimes when you speak to a number of different people, you say, wow, I never thought of it that way. That really makes sense. You know, That's and right. that, you know, just research gathering like every company does. Great advice from the Ari Gold of reps. <laughs> <laughs> does he wear a hat? <laughs> No, no, I don't think so. he doesn't wear a hat. No, he does not wear a hat. <laughs> Bruce, I want to thank you for joining us. Frank Mio, I want to thank you for joining thank us. Bruce, this thanks is, very, very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much. My Frank, pleasure. Frankmio.com is the website for the book. Go there. CatherineHall.net. You must go there and see your great work. There. What, what, what was that? That was Fra that's Frankmio.com. I hadn't seen that before. That's nice. Yeah. Captured in the in mind. mind. And then definitely go to the support forums. Oh, yes. To We're looking twit for guests. Photo Any great ideas? We'd love to hear about it. Twitphoto.feedbackroad.com. Yes. There yes. you go. And it's empty, but we're going to make it full. And then with I want to say ideas. thanks to Dieter for putting up the site. Dieter Cheney, he's the one that did That's it all great. for me. If it wasn't for him, it wouldn't be done. And we want to thank you for joining us. We do Twit Photo every uh, Tuesday afternoon, 1 30 Pacific, 4 30 Eastern. But if you miss the live broadcast, don't, because we'd like to see you in the chat room. And, have a conversation. And that, did you see Trey's last night? I heard a lot. Of my someone was in the room watching it next to me, and they were laughing a lot. So. It's a great show. Was it it's a, a really great. I don't I did know. Not it was on it. yesterday, but you can watch the show his, live. I'll tell you about Trey's show in a second, Monterey. or you can download this show from uh, the Twit site, twit.tv. It's Twit Photo. Look for it. Get all the episodes you want it. And yes, we have another photography show, which is really great. Trey's Variety Hour. Yes. And that's Monday evenings. When do we do that? Six thirty seven. Seven. Yeah. 7 o'clock Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. You can, again, like every other show we do, you can watch live at twit.tv. But, you know, if you miss the show, you can download it. And I guess I'll be downloading that one. Yeah. Grace Variety Hour. I don't want to miss that one. Thanks for joining us. And then next week, um, Joel Grimes. Joel Grimes. Yes, of I'm not going to be here. I'm going to be at the I know. Sarah NAB and I, show. Sarah, Sarah and I are going to hold down the fort. Sarah Lane will be hosting yeah, with you. Yeah, I'm very excited. And we'll talk sports photography. She's amazing. Look at that. Oh, you've seen, everybody's seen this. Yeah, That's his, iconic. His work's phenomenal. Joel so. Grimes, our guest. Thank you for joining us. You'll be us. in studio with us. So. We'll see you next time on Twit Photo.